Hey, idiots, there's going to be spoilers for Arcane Season 2, like actual real life spoilers. So if you don't want to see how a certain character goes down the character journey in Season 2, don't watch the rest of this video. But for those of you who do and are itching for everything Arcane, you've come to the right place. So I know we've been getting a lot of content recently, and I've been posting a lot to keep you guys filled in, and this will probably be the last tidbit of information that we're getting for a while before the actual trailers and the actual teasers start dropping, so savor what we have right now, okay? So there's an Annecy Film Festival that Fortiche was part of. They even gave two minutes of footage from Arcane Season 2, so I'll be going over all of that. But first off, for Arcane, they had two posters. I don't really want to look too much into posters. The season one poster with by Hugging Powder basically meant nothing and we couldn't interplay anything that would happen in season one. But I think it's still pretty important to talk about. We have this picture of Vi and she's looking backwards and there's a giant monkey drawn on her back. See, the monkey kind of symbolizes destruction or damage whenever Jinx used the monkey bomb and exploded and killed her whole family. And whenever Jinx drew the monkey in the future, it follows an attack. She drew a monkey in the Hextech building and then she blew it up. She drew a monkey on Caitlyn's wall before kidnapping her. And now she drew a monkey on Vi and probably is trying to kill her or kidnap her. See, from the other poster, we get the sense that Jinx is possessive of Vi and maybe he's just trying to capture Vi instead of harming her. But we're just going to have to see how that goes for Vi. And there's also some scribbles in the background, but yeah. This other poster I actually like a lot more. It's of Jinx painting on the canvas with her chaotic art. And it actually gives Jinx a bit of agency as her own as a visionary. In season one, Jinx wasn't really thinking for herself most of the time. Maybe in some regards were like on her in her weapons and in her attacks, but overall she's just following Soko. But now we actually get Jinx as an independent leader and actually has a plan or a vision, the cogs thinking in their head of how she wants the world to look. And I think that's actually amazing for her as a figure that Zahn needs for actual change. So that's going to be pretty amazing. Now onto the Annecy panels, we have two days, one where Fortiche just talked about themselves and one where they talked about Arcane. I think it's pretty important for the Fortiche panel. A lot of people are like, oh, where are they going to talk, are they going to talk about Arcane? No, they want to talk about themselves as an individual studio, okay? It's going to be annoying just to be shackled to another company, Riot, or just shackled to one project, Arcane, and they, they want to grow, they want to be themselves, so... Yeah, I want to talk about that a little bit. Fortiche said they want to pursue future like film endeavors and other TV animations. And they have this Penelope of Sparta thing that I will be reviewing just because Fortiche always cooks. So I'm looking forward to that. But still, we do get the sense that Fortiche loves Riot, their partnership with Riot. And they probably are going to keep working with each other for their future projects. So don't, don't be scared that Arcane is ending. We're still going to get good stuff. All right. Now, for the Arcane panel, we actually got a lot of important information. For one, Amanda Overton was there, and Amanda has been our favorite leaker of what's going to happen in Season 2. So, thank you, Amanda. Maybe I'll make a documentary video about you. But yeah, she was talking about some concept art for Vi, how they want to take Vi to a darkest place. It's kind of a contrast for Jinx. In Season 1, Jinx was like going down the hole of darkness until she ultimately came into herself and realized who she was. And Vi is very confident. Vi always knew who she was. She's like a leader. And it's nice to see in season two how they're taking her down, going through the Jinx arc of kind of being unsure of who she is. They, we get some concept art for design. This isn't official, so we don't know if like this is how Vi looks in season two, but they did give her a design how she Vi is now in a black leather jacket. On the back, there's like a two-headed wolf from League of Legends. And how she dyed her hair black with only a little bit of red showing at the tips. Overall, in this design, there's a lot, there's a big lack of red. As it shows Vi's loss of individuality and confidence in herself, maybe she's hiding from herself or hiding from someone else. But again, this is just concept art. We all know Vi's going to look like this in season. Then they gave the audience like two minutes of actual footage from season two. This is kind of like a montage scene similar to the enemy scene in episode five where we just get cut arounds. And in this case, it's Vi following an argument with Caitlyn after, after their strike team mission. And then Vi is just trying to fuck herself up. She just goes to illegal fight rings in the darker sides of Piltover. Or she goes to nightclubs and bars in Zaun. And we just get the sense that Vi is in a really troubled mind space. In the bar, Vi was seen punching the liquor guy that we see in season one. But while she's punching him, she also is hallucinating that she's punching Caitlyn. In the fight rings, she just keeps on fighting where she's winning at first, but she gets more beat up and actually loses at the end. This is kind of like Legend of Korra, where Korra went into fight rings, tried to regain her individuality and try to realize her own strength, and she kept on losing and failing as she just spirals down. 
But Vi still has a support network. We see the big bulky guy in the teaser taking care of Vi, at least in the first half, where he's like stopping her from fighting other people. She's watching her illegal fight rings and not betting like everyone else. And he helps take her back to wherever she lives in Piltover at the end of the night after she's completely wasted. But they also get into an argument and we don't see him in the second half of the show, which just shows her further degradation. Man, I'm really scared to see what they're going to do with Vi. Vi's probably been like a standard protagonist and she's been the least subversive in season one. So it's really nice to see how, yeah, no, shit's going to happen to her. She might even die in season two and how they're taking a character on a completely different path. Amanda said that their vision for Vi this season is to take her to the darkest place that she's ever been. And what will Vi do when she has no one around her left to protect? Vi is going to go hard in season two. I hope you guys are ready to cry. We do get the sense in the sequence that it takes place over a period of time, maybe a few days, weeks, or even a few months. It makes me wonder how the logistics of this plays out. If there's war, how is Vi getting in between Piltover and Zon? Are there even nightclubs? Are people even still having fun while people are dying all around them? That doesn't make a lot of sense, but I guess we'll see how that goes. I can't really say anything right now. There's no dialogue in the sequence, it's just mainly music and action and sound effects. So yeah, that's all. That's pretty much all we got from the Annecy Festival. My source wanted to stay anonymous. They couldn't get any pictures or evidence of anything, so I could be just fucking out of my ass here and everything could be a lie, but I'm pretty confident that this is real, and yeah. There was a bullet point that did say that there's about 6 hours of footage for Season 2, so that means about 8-9 to nine episodes. I would assume 9, much like Season 1. In the making of Arcane Panel, it's not like a behind the scenes, like bridging the riff, it's more like the production process where they started from storyboards, to the animations, to actual rendering. They did a small Q&A, but there wasn't any information from that, just like people asking, oh, is there an art book? And they didn't give a clearer answer to that, but yeah, that's probably all the information we're going to get from Arcane for quite a while, so I hope you guys enjoyed, and I don't have anything to say. Um, I'll just see you guys in the next one, yeah?